Hey everybody, it's Octavian here. Welcome to another episode of Open Mic. It's good to be back. It's always good to be back. I love it here. This is a great channel. And uh, some great, some great wonderful people who keep watching these videos and keep leaving great and wonderful comments. Like special dropping behind a little caretaker's shrine back there. Interesting strategy from Bard, and uh, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of interesting strategies evolve with Bard. Perhaps not so much in solo queue. Though this is a high-level solo queue game from North America, by the way. Which is why you see somebody like Expecial down on the bottom side of the map playing Bard, and that is one of the reasons why I chose this particular replay for you guys today. And, uh, well, it's not just the Bard play. We've also got Fizz up in the top lane, starting with the Doran's Blade and looking potentially be to be going in the newest direction for Fizz's builds. Inox, could you please be quiet? I'm trying to shoutcast here. Please, Blue Rain, Inox, you guys. <sighs> no, no respect at all, but uh, hopefully you can hear me over the sound of Karthus continually screaming. Um, we do have an Urgot in the mid lane being played by none other than Keen, famous for his strange pickups, particularly in the mid lane. Urgot certainly fits that bill. Um, and as I was saying, the Fizz top lane, very interested in seeing that one. Probably going to be the Bruiser Fizz. And I've wanted to cast a Bruiser Fizz game ever since it became sort of the flavor of the month. Because there's just so much potential with that. There's so many interesting things that a Bruiser Fizz can do because he's going to be moderately tanky. And I mean, even when Fizz builds Glass Cannon, he's difficult to kill because of his untargetability every once in a while. And that stacked on top of a little bit of tankiness and still enough damage to actually be a threat. Fizz is going to become a monster in this newest meta. That is what I believe we're going to be seeing. But, uh,. This lane will maybe tell us a little bit about that beautiful Korean turning around onto Catless Everdeen. Does bring him or her down a little bit. Not gonna snap any judgments there, but I'll just go with him because Fizz is a male champion. So, no, I'm gonna be bringing him down below half as Keen goes down fairly low himself. Dodges out one of the skills, but gets hit by the second one. Ooh, and very nice binding using the minion there. Does hold Vesper up a little bit. That's a Cosmic Binding, by the way. There are going to be a lot of Bindings in the bottom lane now. <laughs> We're going to have Dark Bindings from Morgana. We're going to have Cosmic Bindings from Bard. And Blue Rain, you shouldn't have stuck around. Jordank knocks him up with the Unburrow. Sends a Prey Seeker after him. I mean, he doesn't get the kill, but that's a lot of damage onto Sejuani. And that means that the red buff is still up. To be fair, so is the blue over on the other side. So one buff still up for both junglers. But that definitely gives Rek'Sai a fairly early advantage here in the jungle because Sejuani, she's seen a lot of recent play because of the new tanky jungle items, things like Cinder Hulk turning into, or rather, uh, sorry, Bami Cinder turning into Cinder Hulk, as well as the fact that the jungle just does less damage now than it has in the last previous few patches. So tank jungler coming back into their own a little bit, Catalyst Everton forced to leap away there. Oh, and we have Rek'Sai returning to the bottom side of the map. Once again, flashing in for the unburrowed Vesper. Gets knocked in the air. Flash forward from a special. Gonna cosmically bind Vesper against the wall and pick up a first blood on Bard. Well done by a special, showing us some of the potential of the newest addition to the League of Legends. The masked spirit that is Bard. He's uh, got a little bit of bardic knowledge there. Uh, for those of you in the audience who got that joke, I very much appreciate that you did. Um, one of the interesting things from X Special is that he's been playing a very lane-focused bard. I mean, we are only about four and a half minutes into the game, so there's still some time for him to change this. Ooh, nice uh, acid hunter there. By the way, Urgot, not a very commonly seen champion, so I will go into a little bit of depth about his abilities and their synergies. Um, Noxian Corrosive Charge, the E the damage over time effect that he can fire out. It's an AoE splash that anyone who gets hit gets a damage over time. Oh, might actually have to get back to that in just a second. As a counter gank from Rek'Sai sends Sejuani running away. Catless Everdeen is going very low. The true damage from Heaton Style is incredibly strong. Flash forward from Keen and he gets the range! And that is exactly what I was going to be talking about there before it was interrupted by multiple things. The Acid Hunters will target onto anyone effective, affected by the Corrosive Charge. 
and they have huge range while the Corrosive Charge is active, as Keen just demonstrated for us there. Callus, this is very dangerous. Got a little bit greedy for that minion, forced to flash away just from the pressure that beautiful Korean applies by walking towards him. Didn't actually have Blade Surge up, had just used it sort of unoptimally to, uh, tried to finish off a minion, didn't quite have a accurate uh, guess as to how much damage was needed to kill the minion. It happens to us all. Had the Blade Surge been up at that moment, he probably would have had the kill, actually, but uh, he still managed to get the flash. And against a Fizz, everything counts. Getting rid of any of those escapes is very, very valuable. Special going in, the Meeps providing a bit of damage. He drops a Shrine on himself for some healing. Kazahana bops the heal as well. Here's Blue Rain coming from the side. Beautiful flash from Kazahana. Perfectly timed, and Blue Rain and Kaiju both get stunned up by the Binding. Expecial playing some great Bard today. And hopefully you guys might review your opinions of this champion, because I've been hearing a lot of negativity surrounding Bard. And it's, I think, I really do think it's just because Bard is such a difficult champion for solo queue. And a lot of people in the audience probably don't play ranked fives, probably don't play ranked fives at a really high level, where your support is going to be able to make use of everything that Bard can offer. Callus, everything getting the advantage up here actually has a CS lead now and has harassed beautiful Korean down really low. It's probably just because he's ha he's had the opportunity to back and then he teleported right back into lane. But uh, that flurry of blades there, beautiful Korean, what are you doing? He took way too much damage to come that close to the Fizz and the ult was still up. There it is. That, that's the burst. Even with only a Vamp Scepter, the burst that this Bruiser Fizz can put out is pretty scary when the fish lands. And that's what it's going to be all about with the new Fizz. Whether or not that fish does indeed land. Magical Journey over the wall, gonna bring Bard into a good position to bind the Janna against the wall, not even bothering to focus in onto Sivir. Knows that she is dead to rights. But here comes Keen, swapping around with Blue Rain with a hyperkinetic position reverser. That is a fun ult to say. And, uh, actually, that's going to be kind of a failed gank and a waste of such one. Oh, Keen is taking the 2v1! He is willingly turning around onto the cart as the Ignite is burning and Inox is going low. He knew Jordan was coming, he was trying to buy time, but he maybe was a little bit too confident in his Urgot play. Now Jordan is going to be in trouble and Blue Rain finishes off that kill. The first two kills of the game for Red Team happen in the mid lane thanks to a little bit of overconfidence from Gravity Keen. Catalyst 17 now turning back around, has the active from the Bilgewater, but uses it maybe a little bit too early. Would really love to have that slow right now. Beautiful Korean chasing it onto him, gets the Equilibrium Strike and the auto attack right after. The Phage helping him to keep up with the Slippery Fish. Gets a kill, traded back. Both top laners now 1 for 1. And suddenly Red Team is pulling back into this game. They're not giving up the Ghost this early, as uh, I don't think Karthus ever really does give up the Ghost, seeing as he becomes one. I suppose, after the few moments of his death passage, he does indeed give up the ghost. But it's an attempted humor, folks. I'm trying here. I'm trying. Give me some credit. Jordan is going to return to farming his jungle. It looks like a special is playing a bit more what I anticipated to be a standard bard. Though, really, I, I can't say that there's such a thing as standard bard at this point. He's only been out maybe now. Time. It's such a slippery thing. It moves past me. I don't understand it. But, uh... Expecial doing a bit more roaming is is what is the point I wanted to hit on with that bard. Um, though he's back in the bottom lane now, and he's he's really playing a very lane focused bard. He did a little bit of roaming there, as I said, went to pick up some of those chimes that does empower his meeps, by the way, and make him just generally more powerful, sort of in the same way that souls work for a thresh. Ooh, the dragon down below half a minute to get back to that in a second. Beautiful Korean leaping over the wall with that blade surge. Gets knocked up by the Unburrow. And here comes an Urgot from the side. Expecial picks up the kill on Bard and turns the dragon golden so nobody can take it down. Here's Jordan over the wall and he gets, he gets the smite steal. And that is how Bard, with tempered fate, can secure an objective, but Expecial might be paying the price here. Here's the ult from Inox off to the side. Kazahana and Keen are stuck out to the side as well. Vesper, though, with no mana, should not be taking this fight. One more Acid Hunter does not hit. It gets flashed away. Here's Inox back in the middle of the thick of things, though. He does go down, and Keen, Keen survived. Keen survived. What? I was sure that Inox had that kill, but Catalyst Everything showing up at the last second saved Urgot's bacon. And that is going to be a very decisively one game, or one 
one team fight. I'm not going to call the game quite yet. We are only 10 minutes in. Very decisively one team fight from Blue Team. Not only did they get the Dragon Steel thanks to a wonderfully timed Tempered Fate, which does indeed make giant golden dragons. By the way, for those of you not aware, it puts any... I, I, I mean, living, it's, it's a video game, so I don't know if living really applies. And also, there, there was a Karthus in there, but, you know, I'll go with it, for lack of a better term. It puts any living creature in the area of the ultimate into stasis, as if in a Zonia's. So you can freeze things like the dragon we saw right there to save it for a steal, or maybe the Baron in a similar fashion. Um, you can freeze things like uh, Annie's Tibbers, maybe. That could be useful at some point in the future. It, there's a lot of potential. Against a Zyra, that could be particularly devastating if you're facing off against an AP Zyra. It's not a very common pick, but if you were to freeze all of her plants during a team fight, perhaps, that could make a huge difference in an AP Zyra's damage output. So there's a lot of potential for Bard, and I, it pains me a little bit to see people write the champion off so quickly, but I think maybe Expecial's play. Maybe if we see Bard come out in the next few LCS games where he is available, maybe in the next large tournament or something like that, if, if a team does make good use of his ability to take those 5v5 team fights and make huge impact. But uh, Everdeen is up in the top lane against Beautiful Korean. The Shark landed the Chum in the Waters. Didn't quite have the effect that he wanted it to, and now he's in a lot of trouble. Blue Rain is here. He's just buying time for the Playful Trickster to come back up, and he dodges away from the ultimate. Blue Rain has not been having much luck on Sejuani. At least not when the camera's been focused on him. Off screen, he's managed to pick up two kills. Or I think one of those is on screen in that counter gank in the mid lane. But he has managed to do well when we aren't looking at him. But whenever we're looking at him, he seems to be flailing around and missing ultimates here or there. Keen flashing forward onto Inox. He landed a lot of damage and he dodged beautifully around those defiles. And, uh... That is going to be another solo kill for Keen. He's playing a mean Urgot in the mid lane. And this is the point where Urgot does really, really well. And a lot of people don't know how to play against it. Um, after he's completed the Mana Mune, as you see right here, he's got that stacking up. He's about halfway through. Um, and before anybody has really had time to build a lot of armor, because Urgot's scaling is not too great, but his base damage is pretty, pretty high up there. Um, And because of that, once he gets a little bit of armor pen, once he gets some cooldown reduction to spam out those acid hunters, it can be really, really difficult to pull off the 1v1, especially if it's if it's a solitary 1v1, then his ult, the hyperkinetic position reverser, it doesn't only swap places with someone, it actually slows them, ups his armor and magic resist, and lowers theirs. But Vesper is going so low, the ignite is burning. Here's the ulti from the mid lane, though. Inox trying his best to help out his friends in the bottom side of the map. Beautiful Korean going to be rushing in as well. They are pulling resources from everywhere for this fight, and it's paying off for them. Jordank, whoa, the tempered fate saves his life. One more ult from Beautiful Korean. No, the flying sword falls short, and Jordank will get away just barely alive thanks to Bard's timely arrival. I love this champion. I mean, guys, come on. To be fair, it's X Special playing him, and he can play anything to a degree where I'm going to say that I love it. X Special. Oh, that's interesting. Now, see, there's a little bit of uh, an interesting mechanic for Bard. Apparently, you can put it through that, like, corner of the wall near summoners, near the summoning platform. And uh, he'll be able to go quite a distance with that because magical. Oh, I'll have to get back to that. Countless Everdeen getting hit up by the Wall of Pain does still have Playful Trickster to create some distance, though, so he'll be perfectly fine. Be able to waddle his way out of there. Um, and Magical Journey, for those of you not aware, which might be some of you, um, does indeed only bring you over a wall or over a piece of terrain or something like that. You can't raw cast it. And by that I mean you can't just cast it in the middle of the lane. It doesn't like have a set distance that it brings you. It brings you from one side of a piece of terrain to the other side of a piece of terrain. Therefore, if there's no terrain, you can't cast it. Which means that it's not really a guaranteed gap closer or escape. It's a lot more situational. That's a lot more interesting. But Expecial might be in some trouble. Flashes away. Does manage to avoid at least the stun from the Sejuani ulti. And a very nice causing biting. Might actually be enough to keep him alive. Beautiful Korean, why were you going for that tower dive? What was that? I want to see more of that fight. But I guess we're not going to be able to since Jordank V2 is knocking Inox up in the air in the mid lane. 
He's going very low, though. Those solitary defiles do a lot of damage, but Keen is here. The baton is passed over to Urgot, and he lands the max range dot, and it burns and gets him the kill. Keen playing some really solid Urgot. This has been a wonderful game to cast overall. I've had a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys have, too. As a special speeds his way over a caretaker shrine, and uh, Vesper does have a spell shield up, and apparently the spell shield blocks Meeps. I was not aware of that because you didn't, um, the Cosmic Binding connected, there was there was a slow on the Sivir there, so the Cosmic Binding did, oh, Catless Everdeen, gonna be teleporting somewhere, looks to be coming down to the bottom side of the map, actually, coming around behind both bot leaders, the Tempered Fate will hold them in place long enough for Fizz to show up, they are forced to flash burn both ultis, and I don't know if they're even gonna be getting out of here, the Spell Shield does block the ace in the hole, but that is a very, very bad place for Janna to be in, the magical journey, actually just makes the turret not even really existent. And Expecial is having a good time. Just rushing right through the enemy turret. I think that was four times before the uh, journey portal actually did dissipate. And I want to talk about some builds right now. I haven't really had a moment to do that in a very action-packed game. Trinity Force has just been reached for Aurelia, who had a good start to the game, but hasn't really been as uh, thoroughly... How do I want to put this? It hasn't really been as thoroughly ahead as I would have expected. Um, to be fair, Bruiser Fizz is something of a new concept. Uh, it's, ever since his changes, he hasn't really played the same way that he used to. Oh, actually, Blue Trinket gonna be spotting up. Beautiful Korean here. Inox off to the side, gets caught out. Keen might be there, but the Ryla is very, very nice from Inox. Dodges away from the fish as well. He is just avoiding everything right now, but he's getting himself trapped in a corner. And the damage from Everdeen is insane, even without a fish landed. I'm sure Keen provided a good amount of that burst as well. Six and one Urgot's gonna do that. But this Fizz is starting to hurt. Blade of the Ruined King, interesting pickup. Does synergize well with the passive on the Urchin Strike. Allows you to apply that uh, debuff more often as well. Cosmic Binding doesn't quite connect. So, ooh, and that does connect. There's the Sejuani going into the Glacial Prison. Beautiful Korean makes short work of Kazahana, and the exhaust on the Keen means that he has no options here. Double kill for Aurelia. Special's doing his best to escape. Does get the speed buff from the Caretaker Shrine. Might get closed in upon here, though. Yeah, Sivir just took away the bottom turret and is on her way up. There's the boomerang, and there's a few auto tactics. Special does go the longest distance he possibly can through that wall, and the Caretaker Shrine might be enough. No, beautiful Korean following him on his magical journey. Picks up the kill, and uh, actually might go for Jordan. No, he had a second tunnel in his back pocket. Countless Everdeen and Inox in the 1v1, though. I think that Everdeen can actually take this one. He flashes away over the wall so he doesn't have to walk through it twice. Doesn't reset the debuff to his magic resistance. And there he goes in with the playful trickster. There's an auto attack. However, Karthus does have that vengeful death passive. And so in the 1v1, it looks like both sides lose. Kazahana in a 1v1 again with Vesper. We have them all over the map here. Flashes away from the boomerang blade. And there's the ace in the hole. The spell shield is not up. It blocked the peacemaker earlier. Or the net. I forget which one, but it didn't block the ulti. Probably should have saved it. And uh, ends up giving a kill over to Kazahana. Vesper mismanaging his uh, resources a little bit as Sivir there, I'd have to say. At this level of play, you can pretty much assume that the Boomerang Blade is going to be flashed if Flash is up. And now, to be fair, maybe he didn't know that Flash was up. Maybe he didn't have that particular timer. But it's a fairly important timer. Probably should keep it in mind. And knowing that the Flash is up, knowing that the Ace in the Hole is up, that timer might not have been known either. Like, I'm making a lot of assumptions here about what was known, but you, it's better to be safe than sorry, really, in that sort of situation. It's better to assume that the big cooldowns are up and play around them than to not assume and then not play around them and end up giving up the kill in the 1v1 because you spell shielded the wrong spell. So, Vesper underestimating his opponent a little bit does end up giving up the kill, but that's not the end of the world. Red team, while behind, is only behind 400 gold, realistically. You look at the scoreboard there. More importantly, they are behind those two dragons. And while two dragons isn't a huge deal, three dragons is pretty big. Four is even bigger, and five can crush games. So, they've got to be real careful about this dragon. It's going to be spawning in about a minute and 40 seconds. 
And I think they need to be in the area to at least contest it. Everdeen coming in. Doesn't have too much backup though, and Blue Rain's gonna keep chasing after him. There's the ulti as well. He doesn't have Playful Trickster up anymore. He turns around with the fish, but that's not gonna save him. Kaiju, what? Where where was the teamwork there? Just field goal between his allies ends up taking down the Jonas. So far they have traded one for one. Keen off to the side is gonna use the hyperkinetic position reverser just for a bit of an armor buff. Does get the kill on Inox. Beautiful Korean flashing forward will take down the enemy 80 carry. And the Karthus ulti is up, so Inox will get a kill post-death. Expecial's doing his best with Keen to peel away, but it looks like this is going to be a victory for Red Team, at least that particular team fight. Beautiful binding! Keen able to get the kill back. Expecial, you cannot take this fight. You at least landed a very nice stun. And he stuck around too long after it. Korean and Rain are actually going to be able to get the kill, but I don't know if they're going to be able to escape. He blade surged to him as he started the playful trickster. Uh, and so they just sort of swapped places. Beautiful Korean's gonna be able to get away with his life. That's gotta suck for Catalyst. But uh, as I said, Dragon, gonna be a big deal for these two teams, and it's only up in 20 seconds, and really that fight doesn't actually change much in terms of Dragon, because Ergot and Bard are both respawning just about now. As we already saw, Bard is able to get back to lane pretty quickly. I'm actually, yeah, make special there. There's a better view of that portal for those of you guys, or journey, portal, journey, whatever you want to call it, for those of you guys who didn't see, and uh, here comes Jordank, he wants that crab and he wants even more, he already got the crab dinner and now he wants some pork alongside it, Prey Seeker, not going to be enough to secure him, the two for one, he's going to have to settle with just some crab legs, Dragon is up though and there's the Rek'Sai ulti bringing him close to the pit, Special is around as well, actually Special might be caught out. That trap from Kazahana saved his life. The magical journey. Beautiful Korean really should not be following this journey. Jordan flashes over the wall. There is a triple knockup. He does get thrown back over the wall from the monsoon, but Keen has Vesper all to himself and he gets the solo kill. Red team split themselves up way too much because they just needed to go on a magical journey for some reason. And Expecial is going to go down. Korean is legendary to his credit. But Catalyst Everdeen wasn't even in this fight. That was a disaster. From red, don't follow the bard every time. Don't, not every, just, unless you got vision over there, and it was a pink ward from blue, they had vision control in that area. Don't follow the bard into darkness. Don't do it. It's never gonna work out. You can see now, now there are three members of red team in mid lane. And I mean, this is a bruiser fizz, he eats towers for breakfast. They do have beautiful Korean coming from behind, but a wonderfully timed ult from Keen will hold him up long enough. Maybe they can go for this kill. Catless Everdeen. Actually, no, that's gonna be Keen taking down the kill, and Blue Rain is going to continue on with the chase. Jordan coming from the coming from the wings, looking to save his allies. Might actually be giving up his life. No, Kaichu doesn't have the damage to take him out. Blue Rain is on a rampage. Is anybody gonna die from Red Team here? Yes, Catless Everdeen will take home the kill, and that'll be a 2 for 2 trade. They went a little bit too hard for that tower. And who got the dragon? The blue team got the dragon throughout all of that. I, I hyped it up so much, I said it's going to be so important. And then there were so many weird fights, like just strange fights near the dragon pit that I didn't even see which team got it when it did happen. But looking at the counter there, which thank you, Riot, for adding this. Makes my job a lot easier. Um, that is a three. And it was a two before, so therefore two plus one equals three. Jordan going a little bit low to the grump there. That probably would have been bad, but he, he manages it. He manages it. He can he can take down a frog. He can do it. I believe in him. And uh, it's, a, it's a good moment now to take a look at some of the builds that are going on. Always good to keep an eye on those. We've got um, what appears to be a death cap second item for Inox. Still has this tier stacking up. Let's see how far it's gotten. Oh, it's fully stacked, so... Might just be needlessly large and then turn these two here into an Archangel's. It depends on whether he values the shield or the damage more. They'll both give a big chunk of damage, don't get me wrong, but I think the death cap will give more. Um, but he does go for the Arcane, or the Seraphs, I suppose, since it instant transforms because he had it fully stacked. Um, he does go for the Seraphs instead. Still choosing to sit on Boots 1. Makes a lot of sense. He's uh, not really choosing to go too aggressive in these fights from what I've seen. He's really waiting for the fight to come to him. Tries to get... Because there is a lot of dive on the other side. Uh, so I think the card this was actually a really good pick against the comp that he's against. It kind of sucked for him a bit in lane. Because uh, Urgot is a much stronger laner than Karthus. Like, that's 
you don't see too many ergots, so maybe that isn't too obvious, but Urgot is actually quite a strong laner. His problem is that he doesn't really fill a good role in most team comps. He's a little bit weird. <laughs> There's no better word for it. He's a little bit weird in terms of what he does. Um, and he kind of falls off a bit as the game goes on. Because, as I said... Oh, actually, I might have to get back to that. Kazahana in a lot of trouble. Forced to flash away. Beautiful Korean comes in. Does land the equilibrium strike for the slow. He's going very, very low himself, though. He's at half and a double. Binding from Expecial will snare up the front line from the other side. Magical journey over the wall. Blue Rain going to follow him. As Vesper comes in with the ulti, but here's Catalyst Everdeen. He wasn't even in most of this fight. Now he's here for some revenge. One kill for Urgot. The Karthus ult does basically nothing, and that is a double kill for Keen. Catalyst Everdeen wants to continue on with the chase, but a uh, tornado is going to halt him in his tracks. But you know what's really easy to chase down? Barret. It doesn't go anywhere. It just kind of sits there. Let's you, lets you uh, throw lots and lots of damage at it. So they've already got it down below half, and as I said, Bruiser Fizz, stationary targets go down so quick. He's got the percentage damage not only from the Blade of the Ruin King, but also from being Fizz and having Urchin Strike. So Baron made very short work of, and that is suddenly a big advantage for Blue. They've got a lot of pushing power right now. They can make a lot happen on the map if they choose to. They're going to have to choose to, though. They're going to have to find an opening. It's always the impetus on whoever has the Baron buff, or whoever has the lead in some definitive way. Mm, pardon me. They have to find the opening, the chink in the enemy armor, to pressure. Oh, beautiful Korean. Actually, I think he could have handled that 1v1 with Kazahana. A little bit of a um, opportunity lost, but to be fair, they had no vision. I'm, su I'm surprised that beautiful Korean was even that far in the enemy jungle, though. They knew they had just backed from Baron, so I suppose it wasn't too dangerous. But they had no vision in that area, so going for the 1v1 with Caitlyn. Oh, Countless Everdeen finds Beautiful Korean off to the side, forces him to flash over the wall. That's a really valuable cooldown. Because Beautiful Korean has actually, with his mid game rolling around, been doing really well. I mean, we saw him get a legendary kill earlier. So he's the main threat right now, as far as um, the back line is concerned. The main threat to Blue's to Bloom's back. Blue's back line. I can talk coherently for long periods of time. It's not like that's my job or anything. Oh god. Wall of Pain, very nice Wall of Pain actually. It could have maybe gone for that engage, but they didn't actually have Aurelia in a good spot. And as I said, Aurelia is going to be a big, big deal for Red Team. They're gonna need to get Beautiful Korean to the back line. Blue Rain going hard right now, a little bit Unwarranted, I would say. He gets taken out of half health before he even tosses out the ulti. The Tempered Fate will hold Karthus in place as a special looks to try and land a binding. Keen's just gonna take John onto the ground. In the space of a few Acid Hunters, there's Catalyst. Everything caught off to the side, but he is Fizz. And uh, thus, never really caught out so long as he has Flash up. And that'll be the top lane turret down just to lane pressure as Blue continues. To press the advantage in the mid lane, beautiful Korean diving to the back lane, gets chunked down below half, the ignite is burning, the fish is around as well, Kalos Everdeen does some great damage, some great disruption in the enemy lines, does go down for it, but in the end, that is definitely worth, as they pull off nearly an ace, Sejuani escaping with barely any health, actually the build's over, doesn't quite kill him, that is a lot of armor on that pig, but uh, still nearly an ace. And they've got a lot of pressure in this mid lane still. That is one bothersome thing about the cannon minions while they have Baron. They do not tank the turret. So they gotta wait till the next minion wave. And Janna with Eye of the Storm. Actually, I don't think they'll be able to save this turret. I'll mouse up. Yeah, that turret is absolutely dead. I don't think they get the inhibitor though. They're too low to try and take that down. The magical journey over the wall. Blue Rain looking to take this fight. It does get bound. Bound against the wall by a special. It is one nice combo that you see a lot of bards doing. Pretty much one of his most basic ones. If you magical journey through a wall, you're guaranteed to be next to a wall when you come out the other side. And Cosmic Binding, if it hits an enemy and then hits a wall, will bind that enemy to that wall. Oh, special. Make special, that is dangerous. I don't think you can handle that. Yeah, he's, he's gonna float on away. And therefore, any single enemy who follows you through a wall, through a journey, actually, even two enemies, because uh, Cosmic Binding doesn't just bind enemies that are hit against a wall. It's not just like a Condemn for Vayne, per se. It'll also bind if it hits one enemy and then another enemy. It'll bind them to each other and would stock both. 
So if you're followed by one or even two enemies, you're basically guaranteed a cosmic binding on them, which is really nice. Sometimes it's not enough to save you. <laughs> um, but it can be quite useful, and it's one of the more basic bard combos that I think he has available to him. With more play, and with hopefully some competitive play, we'll probably see some more interesting combos come out, but for now, that one, good enough. Kept, uh, kept it special alive there. Still no upgrade on the boots from Inox. A little bit surprised to that at this point. Um, I mean, the same logic still somewhat holds true. People are going to be diving in onto him. He doesn't really need to move fast to be able to get next to other people. They're going to be uh, coming to him. <laughs> coming to him with force. The problem is, at this point, he's going to need to dodge away from things. Acid Hunters. When he's not hit by the... Uh, by the uh, Corrosive Charge, the Noxian Corrosive Charge, that uh, damage over time effect from Urgot. Blue Rain eats that bullet. It tastes delicious. Barely anything. Blue Rain is really stacking on the armor, which makes some sense. I mean, as a Bruiser Fizz in the top lane, he does magic damage just because of his kit. He has that percentage magic chunk on his uh, Urchin Strike. And then, of course, the ulti does some magic damage as well, and the base value on the ulti is, is good. But he's building a lot more heavily into AD, and so there really isn't a high magic damage source from blue team right now. So building that hefty armor is a good thing. The only thing is, I still would have got a Merc Treads rather than the uh, Ninja Tab. There's a surprising amount of CC over on blue. There's the knockup from Jordank, of course. Bard can stun. Ooh, the ult from Blue Rain. Not even gonna stun a single member and that is the cue to go in blue team takes down vesper almost immediately beautiful korean is going really low the exhaust on the keen is not going to be enough to stop this rampage blue rain down to half health as karthus gives up the ghost <laughs> and jordank off to the side going to be burrowing in the unburrow knocks up blue rain into the air beautiful korean is the last man standing for red team and i don't think he'll be standing for very much longer triple kill for the bruiser fizz 12 5 and 5 beautiful performance from catless everdeen beautiful performance from keen and some great bard play from Expecial. that's going to be the game thank you guys for watching blue team taking home the victory today my name is octavian you are all wonderful and i'll be seeing you next time Hello there, fine folks. Welcome to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed putting it together. And uh, if you did, you can go ahead and check out my channel. There's a lot more content over there very similar to this. Or some of the previous free mic episodes where myself and occasionally other shoutcasters hop on in to Epic Skill Shat's channel and give you guys some uh, shoutcasting to listen to. So if you did enjoy it, I would be very much obliged if you clicked on a link or two. Anyways. That's all I've got to say. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.